Welcome back, Katie. Welcome back to the Nightmare of Mensis. And we're just gonna have a nice audience with I. Hello, I. I have two of you. Man, isn't this a lovely place so far? I could settle down here. Anyway, this indoor section is called, uh, Murgo's Loft. Who's Murgo? Well... We'll find out more formally, sort of, later. But, uh, I might as well just tell you, Murgo is the, uh... The Nightmare Newborn we have heard, uh... We've heard crying throughout the back half of the game, and we've heard some mention of nightmarish rituals, using a newborn to do something, and uh, something about the Mensis ritual must be stopped lest we all become beasts. You know, all that, all that shit. Um, it'll become a little more clear that Murgo is the baby we're after. But. You do kind of have to connect the dots on your own. And hey, you got a handy dandy elevator down here to the lamp I was talking about last time. Which, uh... Makes that other lamp completely obsolete, because you can just warp straight here to the base of Murgo's loft. Not even have to worry about the brain of Mensis. Ain't that sweet? I'll answer for you. It sure is. Anyway, these little, uh, these little walking tin men are Murgo's attendants. And the ones up here on the, uh, the entrance floor are actually non-hostile. They just kind of walk around, keep to themselves. Uh, unless you go out of your way to attack them, which I am, because I want blood echoes. But even then, they can't do much to you. Just kind of push you around. Well, I will. Well, I will. This is actually take two of this commentary recording, uh, because some stuff went wrong and I kind of flubbed some, uh, opportunities to talk about stuff, uh... But I did make that push-you-around joke, and, uh, uh... <laughs> went on a bit of a tangent about Rob Thomas. Which, you don't get to hear now. Oops. It was- it was all good stuff, don't worry. I like Rob Thomas. More specifically, Matchbox 20. Solo Rob Thomas, kind of like... Uh, he's not bad. I basically just said, like, that that song, I think, scared people back in 96. It was like, oh, he's gonna push you around. That's like domestic violence. And then, like, you spent the rest of his career being, like, the most, like, cuddly rock singer possible. This side of Brad Paisley, at least, you know. I don't know. Rob Thomas seems like a sensitive soul. Ah! That guy just pushed me. That guy just came up and pushed me. And you couldn't hear it because they don't speak English. But, uh... His grunt translated to, excuse me, I am homeless, I am gay, I have AIDS, I'm new in town. There's a fair amount of guys in Dark Souls 3 who just exist to surprise you from behind a, a, a pillar or a wall or something and then just push you. Uh, only they're better at pushing you off of stuff than that guy was in Dark Souls 3. Oh, tight spot. That's how you get this item. 
false god waits ahead. What, down there? Eh, okay. Maybe we'll come back here and meet with the false god, but right now we just want to go up, up, up. And out here... some of my favorite enemies in the game. Look at these birds! They got dog heads! <laughs> Isn't that the gnarliest shit you've ever seen? And look at the dog! He's got a bird head! Ah! <laughs> ah I love it. Ah. Uh, it's... <laughs> oh, man. It's so... It's so weird. Was, uh, when I first got here, I could not believe my eyes. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. After... You know, however many hours of, of the occasional fighting, big-ass birds and mangy dogs. It's like you finally get here and you're like, whoa! Remix! And, uh, I don't know why the cage Dogbird sings, but uh, I do know he was hiding a blood gem, so give me that. Give me that! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I never learned how to ask for people's food or their burger. And just a couple more guys. With a couple more items. Oh, get out of here. Yeah, when they just stand there clawing and barking at you, that's a pretty good opportunity to get in close and hit them. Otherwise, they're so mobile. And it's not like you have a good option of, like, you know, just tanking a hit with a shield like in Dark Souls. And, would you look at this? Yet another elevator shortcut. I would love to ask Miyazaki-san if he, like, has any particularly strong feelings about elevators, because there are so many goddamn elevators in his oeuvre. And, like, they're always... It's never a bad thing to be on an elevator. The elevators in these games are always good, because they're always shortcuts. There's never, like, a big set-piece, like, fight on an elevator, like in, say, you know, every Platinum game. I wonder if Miyazaki likes elevators. Because a lot of the, uh, the co-op mechanics in these games, the sort of anonymous online co-op, was inspired by events in his own life where he was, like, on a snowy hill that people were having trouble driving up and strangers were getting out of their cars to help each other, knowing they'd never see each other again. It's a great story. Anyway, boss time. Oh, cars. Some say cosm. Do you hear our prayers? No. We shall not abandon the dream. No one can catch us. No one can stop us now. <laughs> Alright, it's time for Mikalash, host of the nightmare. Late night host of the nightmare. Late nightmare host, Mikalash. Yeah, remember the uh, mummy we looked at to get zapped into the nightmare in Yahargul? Well, he had a big old cage on his head. That's Mikalash. So, 
poor guy's dead in reality and may or may not even know it. Yeah, so, he summons a lot of puppet skeletons. Usually you can just run right past them, but if they're in here in the boss room with you, then they, uh... You might want to take them out. Nicolash himself, though, is not very hard, at least in Phase 1. All he can really do is auger of every eight of you. And punch you a little bit. And it's done. Oh, wait. Oh, no, it's not. Majestic! Hunter is a hunter, even in a dream. But, alas, not too fast. Nightmares rolls and chills unending. So I have a lot to say about Mikalash. For one thing, I love his boss music. It's one of my favorite uh, boss themes in the game, along with uh, Father Gascoigne. Um... His, his title there, Host of the Nightmare, uh, you might think it's like, host, like, uh, like, like the host of a party or a show or what have you. And he's sort of, I mean, you could think of him that way, but, um, I think it's more accurate and I think also more accurate to the original Japanese to think of him as the host of the nightmare the way that a, a body hosts a parasite. Like, the nightmare is... Uh, sort of symbiotic with him. We did get teleported here by uh, touching his corpse in reality, so. Another thing about Mikalash, there's a great uh, joke tweet about uh, different types of Souls bosses, including uh, Stomp Jumperson, uh, the gang is back together and they hate you. You interrupted my dinner slash morning and now you have to die. Uh, there was one, though, called Bumpo's Palace of Tricks. Mikalash is the Bumpo's Palace of Tricks of Bloodborne. Because you gotta chase them all around this whole level. He teleports through the, through those mirrors that you can't go through. And, uh... It, funnily enough, is a bit of a nightmare. can't actually catch up with him occasionally, hit him once, but then he usually quick steps. So, you're not supposed to be able to hit him in these phases. Since this part of the level is sort of a level in itself, I'm taking this opportunity to uh, just run and pick up all the items. Uh, you can do this after you finish the fight too, you can come back here, but... Uh, I kind of wanted to listen to this scary music more. I love this music. Especially when, like, the psycho strings sort of come in. That shit rules. And also, I kind of did get lost. Bumpo's Palace of Tricks. He's down there. A lot of people like to cheese the fight by uh, not dropping down here and instead just like throwing poison knives at him to finish him off or just casting spells from up above. Which, you can do that if you don't want to bother with uh, all this shit. Him going behind that, that uh, gate and trying to figure out the way around it. He's also kind of chatty. Case in point. Oh, Cos. Some say Cosmo.
Yeah, so he's insane. Uh, and he says all that again, uh, as many times as he needs to while you struggle to find out where he is. Um, so, let me skip it all that next time it comes up. Like here. Yeah, yeah, howl at the moon. I'm coming to finish you off, don't worry. I just gotta head down here and pick up the last couple items. Which are guarded by... A big guy! Got him. Skip all the dialogue. Accidentally do a gesture, because you're trying to skip all the dialogue. Got him. And now... Top tier moon rune. Thank you. That's what I wanted. Uh, another thing about Mikolash, I've heard, so I heard someone say online once that um, they thought it possible that Mikolash, being named that and having a big cage on his head, might be an homage to famous actor Nicolas Cage, which I think might be a stretch. Plunging attack. There we go. So phase two of the fight is uh, actually more dangerous than the first one. You can still do the auger of Ebriatus. He can still try to punch you, but more often he'll use uh, a call beyond, and he's really good at it. His arcane is very high, so you kind of want to stay on him uh, so that you can always stun him out of uh, doing that. It's also possible to dodge his call beyonds if you're far enough outside the radius or if you dodge toward him with the right timing, which I didn't do there. Or here. Uh, and I did die on this part once. I cut to my successful take, though. And you can just... You can hit him out of the move. He'll also parry you with his augers, but, like... He doesn't visceral you, so... Get everything, huh? I wonder if he knew that he was, was dead in reality this whole time. He thinks he'll wake up, but... He's wrong. Either way, though, that unlocks the way forward. That big pit, just where we, uh, just next to where we drop down with a lamp on the other side, we can cross that now. <laughs>